Pope Francis met with two leaders, superiors of the fraternity of St. Peter and has assured them of the right to keep the 1962 Mass, the 1962 Sacraments, the Rituale, the Pontificale, also the Breviary. Check, check, check. Good, good, good. So today we're going to talk about that. You may notice that I'm a little sweaty. That's because I've been running up and down the stairs. My 13-year-old son, two minutes before I was going to go live with this show, he's fixing the fence for me in the backyard, and he, with the shovel, cut the ground line to the Wi-Fi. So for two minutes, I was trying to start this show, and nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. I went down, and Joy said, Beckett snipped the Wi-Fi. I said, I'm going live. Should have been live. I know. So I am rigged up on a hotspot on a phone. And I think it's working. Everything on my side looks like it's working. So that's why I'm so late. Just a little uh, snippy snip of the Wi-Fi. All right. We're going to pray the Our Father. And then we'll get into this big news. Pope Francis meeting with the Fraternity of St. Peter in the aftermath of Traditionis Custodes, uh, and what that means. What does it mean for Institute of Christ the King? What does it mean for Society of St. Pius X? Uh, what does it mean for us? Is this a win? Is this a hidden win? I'm going to give you my take on it, and uh, you're free to agree or disagree. So let's pray the Our Father and get into it. Nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in Celi Sanctificetur Nomen Tuum et Veniat Regnum Tuum. Fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra. Sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Amen. All saints, pray for us, all holy popes, pray for us. Nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right. So yes, I really am just a dad with a webcam. This is not a fancy setup. My son was digging in the backyard, fixing the fence after lunch and snipped the Wi-Fi. So I'm on a hot spot. I was late getting going here. Lots of stress running up and down the stairs trying to figure out how to get this show live. Here we are. No studio, no staff, just a cheap little webcam and a snipped wire. Hopefully we'll get that fixed by tomorrow. Otherwise, it's going to be a long week. Pope Francis, here he is. Here he is, smiling with the fraternity of St. Peter. And here is the news report. The official communique of the priestly fraternity of St. Peter. And then I'm also going to read which was just released, the decree from Francis on what they can and cannot do. And there's actually a little bit of fine print in there that you may find interesting. By the way, before we get started, please like the video, share it on Facebook. And if you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I do put out about three videos a week. If you don't want to miss them, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to be notified. The communique, I'm reading this from the Fraternity of St. Peter's website, FSSP dot org as you know been a member of the fraternity of saint peter parish since 2010 coming up on 12 years i was at the fssp even this past sunday and the sunday before that so uh, a lot of gifts along the way from priests of the fraternity of saint peter um, and i want people to know that sometimes when i'm critical or give advice on things that are going on. This Again, who am I? Again, I'm just on the webcam. I'm not condemning the fraternity of St. Peter. I'm not condemning the Institute of Christ the King. I am like out in the stands watching a boxing match. I'm like, keep your gloves up. Keep your gloves. You're about to get punched in the face. Keep those gloves up. Protect your jaw. Protect your face. Protect your neck. That's all this is. This is cheering from the stands. The official communique reads, I'm going to read the whole thing word for word, so you don't have to. February 21st, 2022, that's today. On Friday, February 4th, 2022, two members of the priestly fraternity of St. Peter, Father Benoit Paul Joseph, 
Superior of the District of France, and Father Vincent Ribbeton, uh, forgive me if I said that wrong, rector of St. Peter's Seminary in Vigertsbrod, were received in private audience by the Holy Father Pope Francis for nearly an hour. During the very cordial meeting, they recalled the origins of the fraternity in 1988. The Pope expressed that he was very impressed by the approach taken by its founders, their desire to remain faithful to the Roman pontiff, and their trust in the church. He said that this gesture should be preserved, protected, and encouraged. I'm going to pause here. Notice that Francis did not say anything about tradition, dogma, doctrine, the traditional Latin mass, the traditional Roman rite, whatever. Francis's emphasis here is that they were faithful to the Roman pontiff and the trust in the church. That is why, in this case, they're being rewarded by Francis. It's great that they're getting this. I'm just saying that this is the perception on the part of Francis for granting this favor. Next paragraph. In the course of the audience, the Pope made it clear that institutes, such as the Fraternity of St. Peter, are not affected by the general provisions of the motu proprio traditionis custodis, since the use of the ancient liturgical books was at the origin of their existence and is provided for in their constitutions. End quote. This is interesting because people on social media are saying, okay, well, what about Institute of Christ the King or some of the other former Ecclesia Dei groups? Are they included in this, or is this just Fraternity of St. Peter? And as I'm reading this, it seems that it would extend to all the former Ecclesia Dei bodies, because it says the Pope made it clear that the institutes such as the Fraternity of St. Peter are not affected by Traditionus Custodius. So I think this means Institute of Christ the King, for example, are safe and good to go. It's also interesting, as I pondered this before lunch, it says that the use of the ancient liturgical books was at the origin of their existence. And, you know, my mind immediately thought, well, weren't the ancient Roman rite, traditional Latin mass, traditional breviary, all that, at the origin of the Order of St. Benedict, the Benedictines? Wasn't it at the origin of the Franciscans? Wasn't it at the origin of the Dominicans and the Carmelites and on and on? Yes. Yes. Next paragraph, second to last. The Holy Father subsequently sent a decree signed by him and dated February 11th, and I'm going to read that next, the day the fraternity was solemnly consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, confirming for the members of the fraternity the right to use the liturgical books in force in 1962, namely the Missal, the Ritual, the Pontifical, and the Roman breviary. Why is that important? Okay, so the Missal is what gives us the Mass. It has the propers for the Mass. You need the Missal. But what if you want to baptize a baby, or perform extreme unction, or hear a confession in the traditional form? Well, then you need the Rituale. You need the Ritual. What if you want to have an ordination, or a confirmation, then you need the pontificale. And what about the prayers that traditional priests and religious pray eight times a day? Well, then you need the Roman breviary. <clears throat> so for the whole traditional life of prayer and sacraments to work, you need all four books. And what's sinister about Traditionus Custodes is Francis removed the ritual, the pontifical, and I need to go back and look. I'm not sure about the bravery from the general permission that Benedict had given in Sumorum Pontificum. In other words, what Francis said in Traditionus Custodis is, okay, here and there sprinkled around, you can have some diocesan priests who have permission from Rome to say the TLM, the traditional Latin Mass, but they can't do a traditional baptism and they can't hear confessions in the traditional rite. There can't be confirmations conferred in the traditional rite. And this brings us to the topic that I really want to talk about today, and that is corralling. 
here in Texas, we have corrals, right? It's where you draw animals into, you corral them into a corral. The long-term strategy is to begin to bring traditional Catholics together into smaller and smaller corrals. And then either they die off, which is probably not going to happen. I mean, we are <clears throat> over 40 years from the institution of the Novus Ordo Mass. Actually, it's 50, 50 years. It's not dying. So they'll corral it, they'll corral it, and then they'll eventually just push it out. And they'll say, y'all aren't really part of the church. Or, as Francis said on February 2nd, no one can really be excluded from the church and the communion of saints. They'll just be an irregular union, irregular communion, kind of like how Novus Ordo people see the Eastern Orthodox. And they'll just kind of this be an ecumenical hugs and handshakes and photos every few years, like what they do with the Eastern Orthodox. <clears throat> Last paragraph. Grateful to the Holy Father, the members of the Fraternity of St. Peter are in thanksgiving for this confirmation of their mission. They invite all the faithful who feel close to them as a spiritual family to attend or join them in prayer at the Mass tomorrow on the Feast of the Chair of St. Peter and to pray for the Supreme Pontiff. And quote. So that is the statement. Now, there's been some back and forth on Twitter and discussion on this today. And I'm just going to say, let's take the W Let's take the win, but let's be realistic about it. Here's an analogy. It's imperfect, but I help, hope that it helps you see this perspective. A bully comes up to you when you're in seventh grade and gives you a big wedgie and slams you against the locker and says, give me all the money you have and you have $10 in your pocket. And after he's given you a wedgie and slammed you up against the locker and made fun of you, he takes the $10. You now are negative $10. Three weeks later, that same bully says, hey, man, you know, I took that $10 from you. Hey, here's three bucks back. Now, is the bully in this analogy generous, kind? Should you, who was given a wedgie and slammed against the locker and lost the $10, should you get down on your knees and say, thank you, bully. You are such a gracious and good man. I am grateful to you, bully. You took $10 away from me, but you have graciously returned $3. Thank you. Hmm. No. You know, it's just like if you've been kept in a cage for months, and the person keeping you in the cage promises to let you out for a few hours. You can't be praising and thanking the cage master. He still has his hand on the lock. That's the analogy. Yes, it's one step forward, but we've had 10 steps backwards over the past 24 months. Let's be honest. The last 24 months for traditional Catholics have been very discouraging. It's been a hard 12 to 24 months to be a traditional Catholic because the beat down, something negative, it comes out about every 30 to 50 days out of Rome. And it's discouraging. We're getting slammed up against the locker. We're getting wedgies. So when something good comes down the hallway, we want to be like, yay, we're, we're winning again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for this morsel. But look, Fraternity of St. Peter, it's wonderful. Thank Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that the Fraternity of St. Peter will be able to confer traditional confirmations, traditional confessions, traditional extreme unctions, requiem masses, the whole everything in the traditional books, going back to 62. 
Praise God. But Francis is still taken away. These privileges, these rights, these freedoms, these beautiful liturgies and sacraments of the Roman Rite, he's taken them away from the majority of Catholics seeking the traditional Latin Mass. Most people, up until Traditionus Custodis, most people on planet Earth in 2021 who were attending the traditional Latin Mass, most of those people were attending at diocesan traditional Latin Masses. That might be a shock to you. But I've seen one survey. I also did a survey of my own audience, which is pretty sizable, traditional audience. I said, when you attend the traditional Latin Mass, is it at FSSP, Institute of Christ the King, SSPX, uh, diocesan, and maybe I had other or something like that. And diocesan won. The diocesan Latin Masses are shut down. And see, Francis and the St. Gala Mafia and all these characters know that as long as it is isolated, as long as the Latin Mass and tradition are in a corral, they can control it and regulate it. The problem with Sumorum Pontificum and Ben XVI is that it gave the ritual, the missal, to every single priest of the Roman Rite, every diocesan priest, every newly ordained priest, every ancient old priest, every single one of them could do it without permission. They did not need to get super faculties from their bishop or from their pope. That was the most dangerous situation, and they have still have that completely on lock right now in 2022. Even though they gave this privilege, this, this good thing, this assurance to the fraternity of St. Peter, most people have lost their only access to a traditional Latin Mass the diocesan. And here's the thing. I don't just want a Latin mass, one or three Latin masses in every city on earth and every diocese on earth. We want the traditional Latin mass as the mass in the Roman rite. Not just one or two or three in every diocese, but every Parish has the beautiful, traditional worship of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost through the holy sacrifice of the Mass. I tweeted that out several weeks ago. I said, you know, we're not just wanting a Latin Mass in every diocese. We want, a Lat we want the Latin Mass at every single altar in the Roman Rite. And then I jokingly said, you may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. The John Lennon song. That's what kind of led to the whole Imagine No Fell Banners. That was the background story to the joke. And we do imagine. We are dreamers. We want the full restoration of the Roman Rite and Catholic Orthodoxy. We don't want goofball priests being cute, dancing on altars, on hoverboards and roller skates and wearing gold lame and holding balloons and all the cutesy stuff that these, these Novus Ordo priests are pulling. Telling jokes during the sermon while they have like a man bun or whatever. We want the full restoration of the Roman rite. And so we have to be careful today. Yes, thank you God for what has been given to the Fraternity of St. Peter and by extension the Institute of Christ the King. Thank you, this is, this is a great thing. It's a preservation Praise God. But still, we have to look around and say, yeah, but look at all the diocesan wreckage. We have to keep fasting. And that's bare minimum, no meat on Fridays. We have to keep praying. That's bare minimum, a rosary every single day. This is what we have to do. Now, I'm going to read the statement from Francis to the Fraternity of St. And this is dated February 11th, 10 days ago. There's one element in here that makes me scratch my head. I'm a little nervous about it. I'll tell you when I get to it. Here we go. The Holy Father Francis grants to each and every member of the Society of Apostolic Life 
Fraternity of St. Peter, founded on July 18, 1988, and declared of pontifical right by the Holy See, the faculty to celebrate the sacrifice of the Mass and to carry out the sacraments and other sacred rites, as well as to fulfill the divine office according to the typical editions of the liturgical books, namely the Missal, the Ritual, the Pontifical, and the Roman Breviary, in force in the year 1962, end quote. Now, y'all know I'm a huge advocate of pre-55 usages, rubrics, and also of Holy Week. This is why I encourage people to get the St. Andrew Missal, to get the Father Lassant's Missal, so you can get those beautiful pre-Bugnini, pre-55 rites. So, I honestly, I mean, again, who am I? But I think really the battle needs to be pushed beyond 1962. But for all intents and purposes here, okay, this is a win. Next, Francis says, they may use this faculty in their own churches or oratories. Otherwise, it may only be used with the consent of the ordinary of the place, except for the celebration of private masses, end quote. Okay, this is interesting. So what this is saying is, the fraternity of St. Peter can say their Latin mass and do all their traditional stuff, but only inside the walls of their churches. So, for example, um, you know, if there was a conference in town um, and they were going to have mass there, I, my reading of this is the fraternity of St. Peter would not be able to say mass outside of their churches unless the ordinary, that's the bishop, gives them the thumbs up. They can say private masses, but they can't say public masses outside their churches. Or, I doubt this could happen, maybe it will, uh, a local uh, diocesan priest says, Hey, uh, Father from the Fraternity of St. Peter, will you come say a Latin Mass at my church on uh, Sunday night at 5 p.m.? He couldn't do that. He would need the consent of the ordinary, the bishop, to say a Latin Mass outside one of the churches one of the properties of the fraternity of St. Peter. So there's a little bit of a restriction right there. The next sentence says from Francis, without prejudice to what has been said above, the Holy Father suggests that as far as possible, the provisions of the motu proprio traditionis custodis be taken into account as well. End quote. Now this is the fine the ointment. This is the nose of the camel into the tent. But what's interesting about it is it's a suggestion, and I was surprised by that. It says, without prejudice of what had been said above, the Holy Father suggests that. So it's a suggestion. So I guess that means it's not required. And so, you know, I'm just thinking through my mind, in traditions, custodis, what could this refer to? For example, the reading of the epistle and the gospel in vernacular from a translation approved by the local conference of bishops. Is that suggested? Seems like it. Seems like it. And then the very last line here, given in Rome, near St. Peter on February 11th, Feast of Our Lady of Lords in the year 2022, the ninth of my pontificate, Francis, signed Francis. <sighs> interesting Feast of Our Lady of Lords was back when Bennett XVI announced that he would be resigning, abdicating the papacy. Significant day. So there it is. There it is. It is a win. I do think you should pour yourself a drink tonight and say, wow, this is great. Our Lady, her Immaculate Heart, a little triumph here, a little win. But we are dealing with with the situation where we're taking one step forward, but we've already taken 10 step words backward. We've already been slammed against the locker. So what do you think? What do you think? Can we trust the Vatican? Can we trust Francis? Are you one of the people who maybe doesn't have fraternity of St. Peter in your city. You were depending on a diocesan situation. Now you have nothing. This still doesn't help 
you. Leave a comment. I do try to read all the comments. I don't always get to them, especially if it's a big video and there's a lot of comments, but I do try to look through some of the comments and, and get it or get an impression of, of what y'all are saying in response. So there it is. Big win. Especially if you've got a baby going to be baptized soon. You want the traditional baptism, traditional extreme unction, traditional confessions. If you've got a wedding coming up, you know, a lot of people are sweating bullets. Like, man, I'm supposed to get wed oh, a wedding this summer at the Fraternity of St. Peter. Am I going to get a Novus Ordo wedding or am I going to get a traditional wedding? Good news. You're going to get the traditional wedding. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. But don't stop doing penance. Don't stop praying. Don't stop begging the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus for the restoration of the Roman Rite and traditional Catholic orthodoxy. Not modernism, not heresy, not confusion, clarity. The Holy Spirit is not the author of confusion. The Holy Spirit is the author of order and orthodoxy. So where you see order and orthodoxy, you are seeing the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not this whole God of surprises like, oh, wow, now we know that women's ordination is legit. Hmm. One final thing before we pray our Hail Mary. I kind of wonder what happened in about 30 days. Because in January, we saw Archbishop Roche getting heavy handed. Looks like things were getting worse, getting worse, getting worse. Then all of a sudden this happened. In Rome, in Vatican, are they feeling some pressure? Have they heard enough people saying, we don't like this, how dare you touch the Latin Mass? I mean, it was a very, it is a very unpopular move by Francis. Even people who don't attend the Latin Mass thought this was draconian. The optics were bad everywhere. Even secular media in America here we're seeing this as sort of like clamp down, restriction, blockade. It didn't look like dialogue, accompaniment, synodality, all the buzzwords of Rome. Okay, let's pray the Hail Mary together. Oremus nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. And this Ave Maria is for Francis, that he restores the Roman Rite and Catholic Orthodoxy. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in molieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et or mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri, et Filio, et Spiritui Sancto, sicuterat in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritui Sancti. Amen. All right, friends, thanks for watching again. Please like the video and share it on Facebook. Also, if you're new, please do subscribe and hit that subscribe button. There's a little bell next to it. You'll get notified three times a week whenever I put podcast up. Also, in case you don't know, all of these shows are available in audio format over on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher. If you go to Spotify and type in Taylor Marshall, you'll see all the episodes. Same with iTunes. You can now do that at Amazon. Uh, this is syndicated on Amazon and also in Audible if you use the Audible app. You can get these shows via Audible. So lots of opportunities and ways to, to follow along with what we're talking about. You don't always have to be on YouTube. You can use these other channels and hear the audio version. If I have something on the screen, you'll miss that. Uh, but I usually try to describe what's on the screen. So make sure you subscribe also to one of these audio formats. And it'll be helpful when you're on the go or on the treadmill or whenever you listen to podcasts. It's a good way to go. And of course, pray the rosary every day. If you don't pray the rosary every day, you're not on the team. Read the Bible every day. I hope you're keeping up with your daily Bible readings that we sent out on January 1st. Um, if you're behind, I will be uploading on Patreon to all the patrons um, files so you can listen to Leviticus and Mark's Gospel, which is what we're doing right now in our Bible readings. So if you're behind, you can, again, put these on your phone and listen to them. And that's an easier way to get caught up just in case. Um, I find it useful. So if you're on Patreon, look for that uh, in the next uh, days or week, and that'll be a good asset for you as well. Okay, this looks like it worked out. 
my son cut the wire to the Wi-Fi. We've got a, a hotspot here, and the hotspot's working. So praise God. I'm glad that worked out. Everybody, thanks for watching. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless and Godspeed.